Hello, people of the internet, my name is Aiden, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. A few episodes ago, we began our, our, first, our first steps towards the exploration of the moon, initiating the contract with the people, I suppose, to, uh, to explore the moon. We managed to also get a, a spacecraft into orbit around the moon. The, the full mission didn't quite go off because we wanted to fly by and then return in orbit and stuff, but that was... Yeah, more or less I was too lazy. Even though in the previous episode, the directly previous episode, we were just kind of pissing around with planes. During that time, plans have been made and and imagined and great, great feats have been achieved. All the, the, the space agencies and space companies of the world are clamoring for a chance to be a part of this. Now they hear that our space program is striving to get to the moon and we do have the capability. But, however, our main rival, the space program of the um, People's Union of Free Kerbal Republics, P-U-F-K-R, Pufkr, uh, perhaps going, you know, uh, getting a bit too big for its boots maybe, they plan to send this spacecraft to the moon. So yes, I want to go ahead and use the Kalishnikov spacecraft to take a Kerbal to the, the moon. Uh, it has a decent amount of fuel, but I think we're going to need to redesign a rocket because the old rocket we had, which isn't there because I'm an idiot, the rocket we had was not very good and was more just an experiment of my imagination than anything else. So here we go. Let us begin. And there we go. All done. The, uh, the rocket has been completed and hopefully it will be able to take us to the moon or take a brave Kerbonaut to the moon anyway. Uh, the name of the rocket is the, uh, here we go, the Kalishnikov N1, uh, referencing, of course, the N, was it, 9, Soviet, um, Soviet proposed, uh, mission to get to the moon. Uh, I have chosen to call this mission, however, the Prostransva. 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 Which, um, literally just means space in Russian. Now we are pretty much ready to launch. I've built like a little launch clamp system here on all four sides. But let me just quickly run you through, uh, run, run you through, you know, what's going on with this rocket, okay? So first of all, we have these five engines here. Of course, a little bit reminiscent of the, uh, the Saturn V. I had five big, powerful engines. Uh, there isn't any sort of uh, fluid ducts. We haven't unlocked them yet. So all of these will just burn out at the same time. Right, so we have this big, big bottom stage here that all burns out at the same time. It's still got the same engine and stuff, so we don't have to worry about any of that. I, of course, have to put um, those on the side there, these little winglets here. I don't seem to have proper winglets, which is which is very strange. There's also a couple of other parts, such as the, uh, the, the half tank and the double tank, which appear to have disappeared. I, I, I can't explain that. But I've had to put those little winglets there. Uh, for the sake of stability. I'm thinking also that I do want to put on a reaction wheel like that, there we go, uh, to hopefully help us a little bit with stability and also improve the look of those towers there. I'm using these, I think I think they're the rear end of a bomber actually is what they're designed for, but I think they look quite cool. They've, they've made it look really, really quite nice like that. The second stage is just two tanks like this. So you got one and a half just there. But if we take off the uh, the fairing there, then we have another one up here. I don't know whether that's going to allow fuel flu. Fl 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 bloody hell! I don't know whether this this piece here is going to allow fuel flow. That is so difficult to say. Oh my goodness! But if it doesn't, then I'll just you know manually transfer it when when we begin to run out. You know, I'll go Alt click, Alt click, out and. That'll do it and that'll be fine. I put it underneath the fairing just because I quite like the length that this produces. You see, it's like really quite ridiculously long. Look at that. And I, I, I quite like that. And I have made a couple of changes to the, the actual spacecraft itself. As you can see here, I've got solar panels all across this side. They're, they're only on one side and then they only have two batteries. So I have to make sure it's po always pointing in the same direction. I'm thinking actually right now I might want to go ahead and just attach one of these on this side so we can at least, you know, always have some electric power. I just thought that looked quite cool. And then otherwise the spacecraft is all exactly the same with the LV-909 engine. As you can see here, I'd ideally want to unlock this engine here, the Rockmax 48-7S. Uh, but you have to unlock a different one, which is 90 Science, and I also have to unlock that one, General Construction, which is 45 science, so we're not going to be able to doing that anytime soon. 
A couple more things. Because we haven't unlocked struts yet, uh, I didn't want these things to be wobbling around with all the force and stuff. So I've set up these these little bars like this that these attach to. Although I think they're only attached to the middle one. So it may have been a little bit in vain, but you see what I'm trying to go for there. We shall prove once and for all that all the power the people cannot that the power of the people cannot be matched. A brave Gerbil Knot shall be taken to the moon and returned for the glory of the Purple Union, our free Kerber Republics, and those who stand with us. <laughs> Bugger. And here we go. I believe that we are ready for a launch. The certain brave Kerbernaut with us today is Mr. Robble Kerman. And honestly, that's because his name is very, very close to the ruble, which is the, the Russian currency, currently crashing right now. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you idiot ruble, get get back in there. There we go, okay. His view is, is uh, not so great right now, of course, because we do have the aerodynamic fairings covering him. Uh, but that should all change. There's something over there. I don't know what that is. A couple of days have passed. I, uh, I fast-forwarded a little bit. Uh, the Bodicea has now left the Kerbal system and is on a, uh, a, a orbit around the sun. But regardless, we are in the perfect position right now, I think at least, to be able to take off and then burn pretty much straight away to the moon uh, without having to orbit round or anything. Maybe, maybe a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah, the apoapsis will be about over here, meaning that the moon will just about be rising, so we can burn straight to the moon. Jolly good. And with all of that being said, I guess it's like launch time prep or something else like that, we're going to throttle up and uh, begin this epic journey. Five, four, three, two, one... Lift off! We have cleared the tower here at the KSC. The lift off of the Kalishnikov N1 carrying the Prostransva to its date with the moon. Now it appears we can use fairly low thrust, which is quite nice. Um, these engines are very powerful and these things, I, I think they would be wobbling around if we didn't have it like this. How is Robble doing? He's looking a little bit upset. Why are you so sad? Oh yes, because he can't see anything and he's just kind of being rocketed up very, very fast into the air. Yeah, I can, I can, I can understand that there, uh, Ruble. It's going pretty well, just reached 1,000 meters in altitude and, you know, there's just barely a sip out of all of these tanks really looking at this yeah yeah like hardly anything about halfway down the tank on the first tank uh, at this point you'd be getting all sorts of different statistics but honestly I can't give you the statistics because I didn't measure anything and I'm not very good at maths as we approach half fuel in these different things I am starting to see a little bit of flexing yeah, look at that. It's wobbling just a very tiny amount. I th that is because these are getting lighter and therefore getting pushed further forward, which is a bit of an issue. But, I mean, real rockets throttle down, throttle down during launch, so it's not so bad. Like, for example, the, the, the Delta Heavy, one which I watched launch recently, actually carrying the Orion, Orion spacecraft. You may have heard of all of that. It was very interesting, actually. I watched the entire mission which was mental. It was, <laughs> it was like six hours and I was just watching this live stream. But yes, uh, the Delta V Heavy actually throttles down its center, central, uh, the core engine on the way up. Um, I, I guess to ensure that it has more fuel in it, uh, regardless of whether like the, the pumps aren't performing at peak efficiency or whatever. And I believe the Saturn V throttled down and then throttled back up again like a couple of times during launch. It's very, it'd be very, very silly to just burn all your fuel trying to go up and uh, yeah. wouldn't really make sense either we are really really tanking it uh, we are picking up a little bit of a, a, a wobble or rather a roll really but uh, yeah there we go we can just sort of arrest that like that oh and we are heading off into the Sun except not really because gravity and things oh yeah nine kilometers in altitude 
probably not very far downrange distance, but I have literally no way of telling. Approaching 10 kilometers in altitude, we have passed 10 kilometers in altitude. Ruble is looking, he's looking all right. We're picking up a bit of a rotation there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's okay. You can stop now. Stop now. Stop. Yep. Good rocket. Yeah, like any sort of rotation that we do, we we put on a um, I don't know what the technical term would be called, but you know that spin, spin, spin. That's it. But then you'd also call that spin. Oh, I don't bloody know. All right. Uh, this prograde is a little bit far down for my liking, honestly, and we are rotating really, really quickly. We've not breached the atmosphere yet, but we're getting that way. <laughs> what is this? We're spinning so quickly. Oh, my word. Stop. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> First stage flame out. We're going to cease, cease rotating. There we go. Decouple. Uh, throttle down the engine a bit and ignite. There we go, we have separated from the first stage, throttle right the way up. There we go, lovely, 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 lovely. That fuel appears to be burning down worryingly quickly. Uh, that's not so great, really. Four! Yeah! Look at that! Farewell! Farewell! Ah, oh, yes. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, the uh, the fuel level was concerning me somewhat, but as a matter of fact, it is not counting the stuff at the top. So if we do that and that, and we will, uh, we'll be all right. We'll be okay. We're going to be okay. Everything is going to be fine. Ruble had a little bit of, of bumpy ride, but he seems fairly happy with the view that he's getting now. I mean, I would be. Look at this. You got the. Uh, the horn of our home continent there in this little island and you can see a little bit over in that direction where are we going uh, our altitude is up to 80 kilometers that's probably a little bit too high there I'm an idiot okay good again using the maneuver node system uh, putting it out the our apoapsis uh, we can see that we can get a we can get a orbit here that's an encounter with the moon just there it's not ideal though let's have a play around with this there we are. That's decent. We can get within 20 kilometers of the moon's surface using just over a kilometer per second worth of delta V. We have a minute before this node, and I don't think I'm going to get a better orbit than that because our inclination is way off. My tea's gone cold. Ugh. I don't think distant objects enhancer is working because everything is very bright and actually looks a bit crap. I don't know what's going on with this, but a couple of things have been going very, very weird recently with this Kerbal Space Program. Here we go, 20 seconds. Um, I think I just want to burn now because this is obviously estimated and doesn't really work properly. Yep, that was probably a good choice right there. Transferring fuel. Really, really shouldn't be doing this in flight. There we go. Goodbye, fuel. Farewell. Ta-ra. Hmm. We already don't have much of a tank left, yet we are about to run out of fuel in this second stage here. We've got 200 meters per second. Will we run out of fuel before we reach the moon? I think we will. Flame out. There's flame out. Okay. Uh, uh, there's no problem at all. <laughs> this, is, this is always just going to be a flyby mission. <laughs> Gosh, Yulon, I don't know. I don't know where the Soviet space program gets you guys. You, you're mental. Go to the moon, orbit it, and return. No, 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 no. <laughs> there we go. So we can become. So we can become. So we can become. <laughs> we we can become within 20 kilometers of the moon's surface, or rather 25 kilometers. Maybe we'll edge that. Oh god. Oh, bollocks. Yeah, I didn't really think of this in terms of flyby, so this is going to throw us off into space here. And quite a... really quite a high orbit there as well. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we can do a 75 meters per second burn and get another encounter with the moon which would send us off even further into space. Okay, this is crazy and very, very dangerous, but for about 100 meters per second, 
at our apoapsis over here we can get another encounter with the moon coming really not nearly as close and then get returned to earth get it pretty much well not a free return at all but we can get a return to earth if we pass by the moon go out to here do a little burn of our apple apoapsis that is cool as hell oh yeah I'm going to continue having a bit of a play around with this. Back in a mo, and there we go. A bloody mental path. Look at this. <laughs> this is so much cooler than just orbiting the moon. <laughs> okay, so let me walk you through it. Right now, we are on the way out to the moon. You know, your, your typical transmuner injection, I guess. We are going to encounter the moon around about our apoapsis, right up there. We'll fly past it, coming within 15 kilometers of the of the of the body, and then we shall escape. That's moon escape right there, going out to about 20 20 20,000 kilometers, so 20 million meters. At this point, we should perform a small retrograde burn and a bit of an inclination change, and that will bring us into another encounter with the moon, coming within 500 and 560 kilometers which will put us down back onto a splashdown traje 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 trajectory which yeah wow just with a little tiny burn out here okay good let's um let's put that into action right now let's do it let's get to the moon let's get ruble to the moon and then to a thousand other places as well my goodness gracious me Plans have been put in place for him to fly by, not once, but twice. It is said that this will shall be given to the, the world's media as totally planned from the offset. But we shall spin past the moon, go out far from Kerbin, return in a little bit, past the moon once again, and using the gravity of our closest celestial neighbor, the same force that regulates the tides on the planet Kerbin. We shall return to Kerbin triumphant and glorious as Rubel watches his home vanish into the into the dark the darkening abyss. Oh that's good. Oh that's good. He wonders about the journey to come. He wonders about the safety of how far he is going from Kerbin. It's all been tested. It's all been tested before. He should be fine, but would his rations last? He had enough rations for 15 days. Would he make it back home, and would the spacecraft be able to handle the forces put upon it uh, by the, 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 the speed of re-entry from such a, f a far altitude? These things were not known. Rubel was a pioneer, a pioneer of his age, a pioneer of his country. And he was prepared to find out. Honestly, he didn't have a lot of choice. It's it's an analogue of the Soviet Union. He didn't he didn't have a lot of choice in the matter. He was thrown in the rocket and said, Yeah you go. Go on, get on with it. Off you go. And you know, you saw the rest of it. What is that? Oh, it's a speck on the window. Here it comes. Here it comes. Looks a little bit odd. Oh my goodness gracious! Woo <laughs> my retinas were just vaporized. The moon approaches, and Rubel awaits his final destiny of roughly 15 kilometers away from it. Ha! <laughs> oh, my eyes actually really hurt from that last. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> <laughs> I scared myself a little bit. <laughs> I scared myself. Oh my word. Oh no, we're actually quite a lot further away than I thought we were. Because we're coming far too close to them. Oh no. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> I guess it's time to play with the maneuver nodes again. Um, woo! There we go. Uh, this is pretty much perfect, I think, at this point. So we're going to come again within within 20 kilometers 
of the moon and then return to Earth this way, so we'll land in the daylight. And uh, that's going to take us to under 30 kilometers, so that's perfect distance to actually return. That is bloody awesome. We're coming up very close to the moon, actually, eight kilometers. Well, that's going to be interesting. Here we come. I, uh,. I want to do a uh, crew report and etc. right now, I think. Right now, I'm going to do it. Crew report. You look at the surface of the moon and try to find a good landing space. The inside of craters might be the best option. It's a lie. Do not do that. Do not, for Christ's sake, do not do that. It is not the best option at all. Find a nice flat area that is not in the bottom of crater because craters are only flat right at the bottom. And even then, they're quite warped. So don't do that. EVA, Ruble. There you go, good lad. We record our observation of the situation at 24 sides for that. Moon's Midlands. Yes, okay, so... Oh, yes, the moon has, um... Has, uh... Things. That... Yeah, that's helpful. It has different biomes. I'm, I'm gonna take one of the mystery goos right out as far as we can go. So, way, way out there. But I wanna take the other two at low altitude. Yep, while in space near the moon. That's what that is. So, keep that data. There's not gonna be a different... Uh, scientific point right now, so we're just going to observe materials bay. The high radiation environment caused a few samples to glow, so we're going to keep that data and take one mystery goo reading. The goo seems to be less dense here. Keep data. Coming up on it right, right, just looking at the altimeter, there we go, now. Oh, I actually got a different one. There we go. Awesome. Oh god, Ruble. Board. Do it. Come on. Yeah. Oh, we got the Highlands as well. Yay! Oh, God. <laughs> That's very close. That is quite scary, actually. Look at that. And we are now on our way back out, which is great. I wonder if we're going to pass over any more biomes. I might just have a quick spam. Highlands. Got that. Highlands. Got that. Highlands. <laughs> There we go. I think that's about as much science as we are going to get from the moon on this pass. But I think as we look over this vista of the moon that we have been presented with right now, of course, rising away from the surface of the moon, maybe to return one day. I hope so, anyway. We kind of need to return someday. There's the sun, yay! So, I will continue this mission next time. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.